dealer markups on new cars, trucks, and SUVs are out of control. Anyone that shopped for a new car lately knows firsthand how utterly ridiculous these markup adjustments are. 10,000 markup, still. All right, and what is 60, this? 60,000. A study from the Bureau of Labor Statistics showed that new vehicle profit margins for dealerships shot up from 4.9% in 2019 to 11.5% in 2022, with most of that coming from dealer markups, or as they like to call it, a market adjustment. According to a study by economist Michael Havlin, which was published in the Wall Street Journal, dealer markups increased during the pandemic and have remained elevated ever since. The outbreak undoubtedly came as a huge surprise to both clients and dealers. Customers received federal stimulus checks and used those funds to buy new cars as dealership inventories were declining due to supply chain issues. Because of this supply and demand balance, markups went up and stayed that way. And it's been one of the driving forces of inflation. So the range of estimates that I provide in my research is from about 35% to about 62% of new vehicle inflation was due to profit increases specifically at dealerships. Havlin discovered that dealer markups were mostly to blame for the widening difference between the consumer price index, what car buyers pay, and the producer price index, what manufacturers charge dealers and other middlemen for cars. According to Havlin's research, the disparity between them peaked in September 2022 at 17.7%. Two of America's publicly traded dealership companies, AutoNation and Asbury Automotive Group, had pretty significant increases on their markups. AutoNation's markups increased from 5.1% in 2019 to 14.6% in 2021, and Asbury Automotive Group increased from 4.5% in 2019 to 14.7%. What's crazy is car manufacturers actually hate these markups. Ford CEO Jim Farley was quoted saying, we have very good knowledge of who they are and their future allocation of product will be directly impacted. Ford even went as far to send warning letters out to dealerships regarding heavy markups on the F-150 Lightning and General Motors followed their lead when they found out about the markups on the Corvette. So if customers aren't happy about the dealer experience and car manufacturers are getting fed up, why are dealerships still around? Why can't all manufacturers have a direct-to-consumer buying model like Tesla or Rivian? The Tesla buying process is as simple as ordering a car off your phone. The short answer to that is there's laws in place that protect dealerships and those laws have been in place for decades. Not only do these laws prevent manufacturers from selling directly, but it prevents competition from new dealers by keeping the existing ones in power. And the reason for that is because car dealers lobby for these regulations. By the year 2009, most states had restrictions on the creation of new dealerships to compete with already established dealers. By 2010, all 50 states had regulations that prevented manufacturers from selling cars to customers directly and had to go through a dealer network. But why do these dealerships have so much influence over state legislators? Well, according to the American Economic Association, states earn about 20% of all state sales tax from car dealers. This relationship pretty much guarantees profitability and survival for dealers. One of the more recent examples is the bill that Florida Governor Ron DeSantis signed into law in June of this year. Want to buy a car without having to go to the dealership? As more automakers are experimenting with online sales, Governor DeSantis just signed a new law blocking most direct-to-consumer auto sales here in Florida. It bans legacy manufacturers that already have a dealer model in place from offering direct-to-consumer sales. It also protects them from manufacturer set pricing and prevents automakers from limiting supply of new vehicles regardless of model, trim, or color. Ted Smith, who's the president of the Florida Automobile Dealers Association, which I'll refer to as FADA for short, had this to say. In doing that, we made a clear delineation between a manufacturer that has never had dealers and maybe never will, and those who have been heavily dependent upon dealerships 
to be their marketing and sales presence in Florida. This would have been a huge blow to companies like Tesla, only they lobbied for their own exception that would allow them to continue selling to its customers directly by having language in the bill confirm that all they need is to hold a franchise dealer license for direct-to-consumer sales of EVs. That's great for dealers and for Tesla, but what about for us? Regular people wanting to buy cars. The FADA stated, the franchise system has always driven prices down for the consumer. Dave Ramba, who's a lobbyist for the FADA, was quoted saying, the attempt by auto manufacturers to cut out the dealer would only result in higher prices and less customer service. Those are pretty bold statements to say the least, especially when we've seen dealer markups at dealerships 10, 20, sometimes even $50,000 over MSRP. According to research from George Mason University, these laws, which are all over the country, restrict consumer choice and increase prices. One of these restrictions is the exclusivity of territories. This eliminates threats from competition and really allows dealers to charge what they see fit. You might have experienced this yourself. I know I have. The city I live in, which is a pretty big one with a population of about a million people, doesn't have the best prices in my state. Not even close. I have to drive three, four hours to find a better deal. Completely worth it in my opinion to save a few thousand dollars. But the truth is most car buyers don't know any better and dealerships know that. Most shoppers are going to buy their vehicles locally. The dealership model, in my opinion, is outdated. Although I do want to play devil's advocate just to be fair. I would like to think vehicles would be a lot less expensive if we as consumers were able to purchase directly from the manufacturer, but that would require taking the distrust we have in dealerships and turning it into trust for automakers. According to Wells Fargo, manufacturer prices on new vehicles have been rapidly increasing since 2019 in comparison to the growth before the pandemic. They saw profits of $32 billion in the third quarter of 2022, which was the highest it's been since 2016, even though they're seeing a slowdown in sales and production. Both GM and Ford told shareholders that there were opportunities for strong margins and were not only okay with lower production levels, but that they were planning to make it part of their business going forward. I just wanted to include that information as food for thought because at the end of the day, if people are willing to pay outrageous prices, someone somewhere is going to charge them. That said, I'll reiterate that the dealer model seems to be outdated and costing people rather than saving them money because as it stands right now, whether or not manufacturers raise prices doesn't really matter to the dealership. They will still mark up vehicles as they see fit. Right now, we're living through the worst car market in modern history, something I talked about in a previous video that you can watch here.